refined background. Object matrimony. Address, box 122. Well, that's a good sense he had, all right, Andy. But the thing I don't understand is, if you was really interested in getting married, why'd you have to take out a head in the classified? Well, I tell you, Amos, I got a good banjo that way once. <laughs> you Andy Brown the people having to advertise for a gal. Well, what you mean? Well, that's just like uh, Idaho advertising for potatoes. Well, Emma, the kind of gals I've been going around with ain't the kind of gals you want to spend the rest of your life with. And I really want to settle down. I'm tired of being a bonbon vivant. <laughs> you see, Amos, uh, for years now, I see you having a happy married life with Ruby and kids and everything. And, well, uh, I thought maybe I could have the same thing. Well, Andy, actual, I think it's the only kind of life. And I know that if you find a gal like Ruby, you'll be just as happy as I am. Yeah, it's the only kind of life for me. To come home and find my wife waiting for me after a long, hard day. A uh, long, hard day of what, Andy? Well, that depends upon what kind of job she got. <laughs> well, all I can say is I hope she finds a gal, Andy. Yeah, well, I think I'll get on over to the large hall. I told Lightning to go down to the post office and see if there's anything in that box yet. He ought to be back by now. Okay, Andy. And remember, if you find the gal, I'm going to be the best man. Check. <laughs> oh, hi, Brother Andy. Hi, Kingfish. Hey, I just dropped by. Uh, did Lightning pick up in the mail on that box number yet? Yeah, he brought in some mail, Andy. I got in my office here. Oh, good. Yeah, Lightning said this is just the first delivery. <laughs> yeah, they really patent for you, son. Ooh. I never know there was this many legible gals floating around. Oh, Andy, you got enough there to start 40 harems plus a gal for ball team. <laughs> Well, if I'm going to read all these things, now's as good a time to start as any. Help me, will you, King Fish? Might as well give them the one stove here, son. Uh, yeah. I'll tell you, boy. Yeah, Andy, and the girl say, uh, dear sir, I'm included in my picture. Because I had been told that I had the type of face that men dream about. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, one good thing about dreaming about this gal, when you wake up, she ain't there. You know, of all the letters I read here, this is the first one that really seems like the gal is on the level and straight from the shoulder. Hmm, you think you run into something there, huh? Yeah, listen to this part. I am interested in matrimony with the right man. All I want is real affection and companionship. You will probably hear from girls more prettier than I am, but none that is more sincere and wanting to make a happy home for the right man. And here's a picture. Hmm, <laughs> she ain't no moon and Lydia. <laughs> this is the button that hit me. You know, I'll go over and call on her tonight. How do you do? Uh, how do you do? I'm Box 122. I'm Suzanne Wilson. 
Well, won't you come in and sit down? <laughs> you know, I don't even know your name. Oh, uh, Andrew Brown. Andrew Hogg Brown. <laughs> well, I'll just call you Andy. Uh, yeah, well, they ain't called me Hogg for 20 years now. <laughs> uh, you know, Suzanne, uh, when you come to think of it, it's pretty romantic, uh, you looking into classifieds for a man and me and you getting together like this. Yes, it is. Uh, tell me, uh, how you happened to pick out my ad? Well, it was sort of an accident. I was looking in the ads for our used gas range. <laughs> oh, you see, I needed a stove, and I was looking in that column, and my eye caught your ad in the next column. Oh, uh... Well, uh, make sure we get everything straight. I ain't got no gas range in Oh, Andy. You know, it's so strange, the two of us being here together like this. After all, we don't know the first thing about each other. Well, let's set aside the next few weeks and find it out. <laughs> oh, I brought these for you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> she loves me. She loves me not. She loves me. She loves me not. She loves me. Hey, fellas, look. She loves me. Well, Andy, calling to Mother Nature, you ain't got nothing to worry about. Yeah, I'm crazy about a kingfish. Well, Andy, I gotta say one thing. This is the first time I can ever remember you falling in love with a gal that didn't have no money. Yeah, well, she's flat as a pancake, all right, but money ain't the important thing in this romance. I'm going over tonight, and boy, I sure hope she accepts me. <laughs> well, Andy, don't worry about it. If she turn you down, remember, you got three sacks on open mail over in the office. And so, honey, I was asking you to be my wife. Oh, boy. <laughs> and to think, I was only looking for a gas range. Well, honey, you got one now, and with all the burners going. stage of the proceedings, I think it would be an order to have a little speech from the man of the hour, Andrew H. Brown. <laughs> well, fellas, you're kind of rushing things with this bachelor dinner here, because as you know, uh, the wedding date ain't for another month yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, we just trying to give you time to get your truth on. <laughs> but seriously, fellas, I am the happiest man in the world. And on behalf of me and my bride-to-be, Suzanne Wilson. What's the matter, Brother Thompson? Well, nothing. Nothing at all. Well, like I was saying, I was the world. And one of the luckiest. Yeah, I was the happiest man in the world. And one of the luckiest. Yeah, I was the happiest man in the world. My bride to be, whom I think is the I, I can say once again that I think I is the happiest man in the world. There's an undercard here that's upsetting the groom, and what's being whispered about, I think, should be brought out in the open. Well, it's nothing, Kingfish. Really nothing. Well, if it ain't nothing, what is it? Well, I'd rather tell Andy in private. Will you step in here a minute, please, Andy? I wonder what it could be. I ain't got the slightest idea. According to Brother Thompson, he was once engaged to Suzanne Wilson. Oh, it's the darndest thing I ever heard of. I sure wish I knew what this was all about. Well, whatever it is, if Andy's got to know, it's better for him to know now. Oh, 
What is it, Andy? Boys, I don't know how to say this. But Brother Thompson here just gave me some shocking information. It may throw a monkey wrench into the whole nuptials. Oh, well, what is it, Andy? Suzanne Wilson, my bride-to-be, needs $375 worth of dental work. about uh, her needing the dental work, Andy? No, Kingfish. I went up to see her last night after the dinner and took a box of chocolate-covered nuts on purpose to see what had happened when she bit into one. You see, she jumped, huh? Yeah, and grabbed her cheeks. I asked her if she had any trouble with her teeth, and she said she needed some dental work but didn't have no money to pay for it. Well, that's one of them things you got to expect when you get married, Andy, to have to pay bills like that. Yeah, and some women are pretty foxy about keeping their expensive ailments quiet until after they are married. I can remember what happened when I married Sapphire. Well, what was that? Well, I didn't find out till later, but the day before the wedding, uh, she had an appendix attack. No fooling. Yeah, and so our family wouldn't get hooked with the operation. They fooled the thing until after the wedding, so it would be mine. Tell me, when did you find out that she had uh, appendix trouble? Well, with that reception, I was dancing with her with my arm around her, and all of a sudden, my fingers got frostbit. <laughs> frostbit, huh? Yeah, and then when she thawed out, it cost me uh, $300 to have her appendix out. Wow. Now, look, Kingfish, what happened with you and Sapphire? I ain't got nothing to do with this. The thing I keep wondering about is, why our brother Thompson know so much about this whole thing? Well, uh, Amos, he was engaged to himself about four months ago, and... One day when he's up visiting, he accidentally run across a set of her dental x-rays. And when he see them, he broke in and gave me right then and there. <laughs> that brother Thompson only tools, all right. I didn't know the boy was that sharp. Well, Annie, you got to come to a decision. And besides, brother Thompson likes to exaggerate, you know. Yeah, I'm going to check on that, Amos. But I asked Calhoun to go and get the x-rays from him. He still got them. Huh? And then we can actually see how much work she needs. You gonna see how much work she needs? Well, not me, but Calhoun used to work as a dental assistant. He knows how to read them things. Oh, I tell you, I give up, fellas. If this is any way for anybody to enter into matrimony, then there must be something wrong someplace. Goodbye. Dad Amos, so cocky. Always walking around here with his nose in there, just cause he got a wife that's in good condition. <laughs> Eyes are getting mad in middle age and ain't mad no chicken, I can't be too particular. Yeah, that's right. After all, when a man buys a 1922 Essex, he can't complain because it ain't got a hydromatic. Oh, that the thing got wheels on it. I got the x boys. I got the x Oh, good, Calhoun. Yeah. Come on over here and let's take a look at them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to the left, yeah. yeah. Uh, Calhoun, uh, tell me what is I looking at there on that there uh, bottom row? Oh, uh, well, uh, these are the front ones. Oh, sure, sure, I recognize them. Yeah, uh, how do they look, Kingfish? Well, and the uh, back cuspid doors uh, seem to be all right. Oh, good. Yeah, and these here, now, these here, these are the back ones. Uh, wait a minute, that's something I don't like. Uh, what's that? Uh, in that space there between them two back ones, uh, there's a pointed tooth there. It looks like it's got smoke coming out of it. <laughs> Andy, the smoke ain't coming out of the tooth. It's coming out of my Vesuvius there on the lampshade. <laughs> you did all right. Well, Calhoun, I digressing the thing step by step. Uh, tell me, how did the thing look? Well, I'll tell you, it looked great up here in front. But when you start traveling toward the rear, past the four-year molars, you was in wide open country. Oh, <laughs> bridges back there. Bridges, wide docks, and general pavement. Well, now, boiling it down to dollars and cents, uh, how do you think Andy's going to come out? Well, I tell you, I think Brother Thompson was about right. This job's going to cost anywhere between three and four hundred dollars. You know, I tell you, fellas, 
Whilst we were talking there, uh, thing that's still the most important to me is the fact that I love Suzanne. Oh, mm, still crazy about her, huh? Yeah, and I've been thinking. I ain't gonna let three or four hundred dollars stand between me and a life of happiness. I'm still gonna marry her. Well, now, that makes sense to me, Andy. Yeah, and as long as I'm gonna have to pay for it in a house, I might as well tell her to go ahead and have the work done so after we're married, she won't have to bother with it. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it ain't no sense holding off as long as you're gonna marry her anyhow. Yeah, I got over there right now and tell her to proceed with the work. Well, Andy, that's a good investment. If she's like most wives, you'll find out that the mouth is the one thing that she uses the most. Oh, man. Yes, Miss Wilson, that can all be done. It'll take about three weeks with our appointments every day. Well, that'll be quite all right with me. Uh, just hold the phone while I look at my appointment book. Can you start tomorrow at 2 o'clock? That'll be perfect. Thank you very much, Dr. Wilkins. Goodbye. 3.30, 3.40, Well, I want to thank you very much, Mr. Brown. You make a receipt, please. Yes. Well, thanks for doing such a good job on my fiancé. I understand you and Miss Wilson are getting married next week. That's right. As a matter of fact, I'm having my second bachelor dinner tonight. Second bachelor dinner? Second? Yeah, well, you see, the first one ended up on a bad note, so the large brothers are giving me another one. Well, I certainly want to wish every happiness in the world, Mr. Brown. Thank you. And here's your receipt, Mr. Brown. And thank you. Thanks. Well, good day. Thanks. Good day. Too, huh? Yeah, I guess so. I ain't seen her in the last couple of days. You know, she says she's busy getting that truth all together and everything. Oh, yeah. That takes a lot of time, Mike. Yeah. Well, Brother Andy, since you didn't get a chance to finish your speech at the last dinner on the counter, Brother Thompson dropping that bombshell, I think we should have a few words from you now. A gentleman is an old saying that goes all's well that ends well. And I was happy to say that everything's looking great. I was looking forward to being a happy married man and spending the rest of my life... Oh, Andy. Well, if it ain't my bride... Uh, could I see you for a moment, Andy? Oh, why, certainly, honey. It sure was nice of you to drop by, honey. Well, I didn't want to interrupt. Oh, that's all right. Come right in. <laughs> Oh, uh, excuse me, but this must be your brother, huh? No, Andy. Oh, uh, well, I'm so glad you come over, honey. <laughs> uh, uh, he ain't your brother, huh? Uh, yeah, well, uh, how about you and your cousin sitting down here and enjoying the festivities? <laughs> He's not my cousin, Andy. Yeah, well, uh... uh he ain't your cousin, huh? Well, is I at least getting warm? Look, Andy, I came over here to tell you something. Yeah, well, what do you want to tell me, honey? Well, I can't tell you in front of all these people. Couldn't we step outside for a moment? Yeah, sure. Excuse me, fella. I tell you, boy, if anything go wrong here, this is the last bachelor dinner I paying for. Now, now, wait a minute, young fella. Let's take it easy and not jump to no conclusions. Oh, uh, yeah, maybe that's for the fun. Oh, if that fellow's her father, the kingfish is my sister. Well, the only thing that I can think of is that... Andy, friend of my childhood, tell me what is it all about. Andy, don't tell me she's dumping you for him. Holy mackerel. I know there was something wrong when I see the way she smiled at him. And with my teeth. <laughs> In the office, calling a taxi cab. Oh, Andy, I'm sure sorry to hear this. I wouldn't let him get away with it. This is the dirtiest trick any gal that ever played on me. I've had gals jilt me before, but not after this kind of an investment. 
Andy. It's an outrage. We ain't gonna let them get away with it. Come on, Captain. Now, wait a minute, fellas. No. Just a minute now. Uh... Yes, thank you very much. We're here in the interest of decency and justice. You done frauded my friend Brown here out of nearly $400. Andy, in the first place, I didn't ask you to send me to the dentist. That ain't got nothing to do with it. And I fully intended to marry you up until two days ago. That's right. Suzanne is an old sweetheart of mine. And we ran into each other the other day for the first time in five years. And, well, uh, we fell in love all over again. That's the truth. Well, if you was going to marry her, you was got to reimburse me for them choppers. Listen, I had nothing to do with this. What do you mean you had nothing to do with it? My friend Brown here paid for them teeth, and you going to marry the gal. You going to get the benefits and don't want to pay. Well, what about it? Well, it's just like a man filling up his gas tank and then having somebody steal the car. Well, I'm sorry, but I don't know anything about this dental work. No. Let me tell you something, bud. You try to get away with this and there's going to be trouble. We ain't going to stand for nobody to pull nothing like this on one of our dear brothers. And you might as well make up your mind to do something about it. Because if you don't, you're going to regret it. And I'm the one that's going to see that you regret it. Furthermore, we... I don't see no sense in me losing my teeth over somebody else's. <laughs> Two weeks ago, I had a gallon four hundred dollars, and now I ain't got nothing. Uh, Andy, I wonder if I could see you outside for a minute. Oh, are you? Oh, please, Andy, come on. All right. Look, Andy, you fighting a losing battle. Well, I've been gypped, Amos. Listen, Andy, this is just one of them things that happen in life. And after all, if Suzanne and this fellow's in love, there ain't nothing much you can do about it. Well, at least you ought to pay for the tea. Look, Andy, the fella didn't have nothing to do with this. That was all you're doing. Now, if you take my advice, you just save yourself a lot of trouble by forgetting it. A thing like this happens once in a lifetime, so you just have to take it and like it. Well, I guess you got something to aim. Why, certainly. You'll find somebody else, Andy, and you'll forget all about this. That's right, Amos. I'll find somebody else. As a matter of fact, I got two bags of mail in that it ain't even over there. Plenty of gals in that that I could go for if you want to marry me. Sure, Andy. You'll find somebody else. Yeah, well, I better get everybody out that office and start digging again for my wife. <laughs> uh, how do you do? I was box 122. Won't you come in? <laughs> <laughs> Out of your mouth onto the floor and broke. 